you recently offered your Protection of Women and Girls in Sports Act uh, as an amendment to the, the recent spending bill. <laughs> and you got the Democratic senators on the record uh, who opposed this uh, Protection of Women and Girls in Sports Act. And most recently, and I'm sure based on her answer, in opposition would be Don Staley, head coach of the women's South Carolina Gamecocks team, who, uh, I mean, was asked directly by OutKick about the uh, transgender and men identifying as women playing in women's college basketball. And just her, her overall answer saying she doesn't oppose it, saying that she would be for it, uh, is dumbfounding. Chad and I hit on this yesterday. But when you see this, uh, with a coach at the top of her sport, a national championship winning coach, not defending what your champion in Washington, what do you think? Well, obviously, she's a pretty good coach. Uh, yeah. They've uh, they've won a lot of championships. And uh, I say coach, recruiter, because you got to have player, players win games. Coaches don't. But, you know, if, if somebody wants to get out there and really challenge her on this, they'd get them a head coaching job in, in girls basketball and start recruiting men to play and uh, see what she says about that because uh, they would to be totally dominated if they went out and got back up some, some of these college basketball teams and uh, let them play against women. I can't even believe we're talking about this. Uh, people have lost their mind. Uh, even thinking about men playing in women's sports, Title IX is the best thing that ever happened to this place up here. One of the few bills that they passed has really made a difference in the last 52 years. And uh, it's equalized women's sports to give them opportunity to – to, to compete and uh, earn the right to, to be champions in any sport, but now they're trying to run women's sports, but that's what they do up here. They, you know, the, the Democrats all voted against me. Uh, they just line up like ducks in a row and say, hey, we, yeah, we're going, we, we got to get reelected. We can't miss any votes. We got to have that money to get reelected. So we're going to vote with the Democrats instead of voting the way they should and voting for uh, the rights of women. It's just absolutely mind boggling to me. Yeah. And it, it, the, the idea that on that stage uh, where the ratings have never been higher, the setting all time records with Caitlin Clark in the final four, of course, South Carolina going for the unbeaten season. There's a lot of positives there. And I can't figure out why in, in that moment, you can't just simply champion women, which is what the whole season has been about throughout the, the, the college basketball season. Well, it's like everything else that they're doing up here. They're trying to trans transform our country into something that's never been. And what better way to do it on a national stage like women's sports? Uh, I call it the, the double D effect. Number one, dumb down the country through bad education system, which they have totally destroyed it because I've been part of it for a long time. The last 20 years, I just saw the teachers unions running the ground. And then they divide our country by doing this, by saying, okay, we're going to have uh, men playing women's sports. We're going to transition four or five years old and let them change their gender. We're going to have these very difficult, hard surgeries on kids that really and don't know what life's about yet. Uh, but that's what the Democrats are doing. I've never seen anything like it. It's not Democrat, Republican. It's Americans versus people that do not like the country that we're in. They might love our country, but they want to change it to something different and, and maintain control. And so it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a football coach, okay? 40 years educator, uh, had nothing to do with politics. And man, have I had my eyes open since being up here. We've got people that, that I must, that I feel like they come from a different planet. I mean, the, the things that they talk about and the direction they want to take this country is absolutely looney tunes. Yeah, and what just kind of drives me crazy with the craziness, Senator, is and you know this as well as anyone, sports has a way of transcending people. It has a way of changing minds at times, too. In, in the height of your popularity and success at Auburn, I'm sure you could have stood up and championed one cause or another, and Auburn Tiger fans everywhere probably would have backed you and you probably could have changed minds. Don Staley had a chance to change a lot of minds or at least get people to admit what they already believed, and that is that men should not be competing in women's sports. Instead, she took that opportunity and decided, well, I don't want to get criticized by the left. I'd rather be criticized by the right, so I'm not going to answer this honestly because I don't really believe her when I hear what she said and hear the long pause in her answer. Do you believe that sports can be a unifier and can change minds if someone espoused what they truly believed. Well, well, bingo, you hit it on the head about, about this coach. You know, she just followed the line. She didn't want to disrupt 
uh, you know, people's uh, thoughts about her. And, you know, she, she's, she's obviously an activist along with being a coach because there's no, no earthly way she could believe that, okay, I want to coach girls against men. There's no way she can believe that, but no. she said it for that, for that reason. So it's just, it just, I, I just don't understand the direction that a lot of these people are going stand up. She should be standing up for all those young girls, those young women that she was coaching there that just won a national championship and talk about the good things. And Hey, listen, we'll take anybody on, but it really not right for, for men to come over and say that they want to play in women's sports. It's, it's not right. I mean, it's, and it's unfair and it's unsafe. Uh, so, you know, it's just one of the things that we're going to have to fight through. We, we can't let them tear down title nine. We can't uh, stop the feelings and the, the, the growth of young girls coming up in elementary school and junior high and high school saying, you know, I'm, my parents aren't going to let me play. They don't want me dressing in the same dressing rooms or taking showers with boys, you know, that are eight, nine and 10 years old. Um, it, it's going to ruin it. Uh, but, you know, to me, again, it's all about control. Uh, we shouldn't even be talking about this, but we are. And uh, we're going to fight back. Senator Tommy Tupperville with us. We know that the time is, is crunched here. And thank you for making the time, Senator. Um, we'll get a couple of other uh, opinions from you. But first, uh, I'm sure you follow the story. John Calipari out at Kentucky. He's saying he's, he's leaving. He announced it to the fans, an official video. It's expected that it will be official that he's headed to Arkansas. And the money involved in this, last time you were on, we were discussing the buyouts. Sounds like the only reason they kept him around was because of a $32 million buyout to begin with. The, the buyouts behind the contracts are crazy. Um, can anyone put an end to that? No. Well, first of all, I've been a, I've been a proponent of – I've had a couple of buyouts over my career. It wasn't near that, uh, by the way. Right, but, yeah. They skyrocketed but, but, recently. Yeah. Th these athletic directors have lost their minds. They try to win the press conference, and then they get talked in by these big-time agents. Uh, they get tricked. And by, at the end of the day, basically, these ADs are getting outsmarted. They need to stand up for their school first. We're worried about the coaches. We're about the players. We're about your, your programs at, at all levels. We're about men and women's sports. Uh, do the things you need to do for your fans that keep these programs going. But to go out and give a buyout like that, um, that athletic director should be leaving. If he ever, ever has to pay that off, he should be next in line, be out the door. It makes no sense. We've gotten to this point. It's caused the NIL. It's caused the transfer portal. All these things that these athletic directors have done over the years, and I've seen it grow. Most of them have never played sports. Most of them are, are supposedly business people, and they get in there, and first of all, they hire a coach. They give them these big contracts, and then they hide behind their desk. They don't give them any guidance. Their job is to help the coach survive and, and get in there and talk with the coach. Give them, give them some instructions. You're the boss. Don't stand back and let these things happen. John Calipari – Good friend, known him for a long time. He's there too long. I mean, you can't stay that long. Every year you stay, you're going to lose part of your your the people that's going to be around you and, and support. New, new surroundings really help you. John will do very good at Arkansas. It's a good basketball school. I don't know what they'll do at Kentucky. It's going to be hard to replace him, uh, but it is what it is. But quit giving these huge buyouts because that is exactly the reason we have NIL today. Kentucky basketball's program, I mean, it's a, a special place. It's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Uh, you certainly have been in the SEC spotlight and the pressure there, coaching in the, in the Southeastern Conference. The spotlight is of being a United States senator and, and serving your state. Uh, what's the pressure comparison in your mind? Well, I mean, th this is not a game. This is life, That's right. what we do up here. But this runs real slow. Uh, you don't play a game every week. Uh, you know, you, you don't have the pressures of playing against your home state rival. But there is a lot of pressure up here. And, and, and I'm feeling it right now knowing that, folks, we got seven months. And I don't care whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. You know, I'm a Trump guy. But if we don't get this administration out of the way and get back to common sense in this country, we won't make it. Uh, and I tell people now that our country's gone, uh, as, as all of us known it. Now, we can get it back but we're running short on time. And whoever gets in there next year has got to be an American that believes in our kids, that believes in our country, that believes in family, God, our education system. Get back to work. Get off your butt, off that couch, and get back to work and quit trying to get a check from the federal government. We are borrowing $80,000 a second, $4.6 a minute as we speak, to pay for people laying around, not working, and then 
you can't say enough about the border. My God, that border is a disaster and it's all for control. Uh, our foreign policy is, is a muck. We're in, we're in the verge of three wars. Folks, we're in trouble. And you can step back and people will step back and say, you know, I've got to divide, decide who I'm going to vote for in this election coming up. I don't care who you vote for. You better vote for somebody that's for this country, because if you don't, you're not going to have the same country, nor are your kids going to have it. So if the NAIA can come out and ban trans women from competing in women's sports, just that simple, why is it so hard for the NCAA to do the same? Lawsuits. It's all about lawsuits. Now, I've been working, Joe Manchin, I've been working two years on a on an NIO bill. We've got a good bill, and that's not ours. It came basically from the presidents, athletic directors, players, coaches, all across the country. We've got every idea. The first thing we got to fix is the portal. You can't let them transfer without penalty. But that being said, but the NIA care less about, obviously, could care less about uh, lawsuits. Uh, the NCAA scare their shadow, but they always have been. Now, I've, I've not been a proponent, and, and I worked uh, with uh, uh, the NCAA for many, many years. They've had a lot of good people up there. The presidents are, it's a tough job. They make tons of money off the basketball term, but they're worried about lawsuits. Stand up and fight for your players in your, in the, in your, in the, in your sports. That's what you need to be doing. If they all sue you, heck, let them sue you. But you're doing the right thing. And I've told uh, Charlie Baker, you know, the new president, that, hey, stand up for what you think's right. Let them come after you. They're going, these activist groups are going to come after you. But don't let them destroy what has made this country, which is sports and athletics for young, young and old alike, and for entertainment as well. We said uh, whenever he took the job that can't believe why anyone would want to be the president of the NCAA when Charlie Baker decided exactly. to take it, man. Uh, uh, Senator Tupperver has been our guest. Hey, thanks for the visit as always. Know your time crunched, and uh, we'll do this again soon. Uh, and it's almost football season. Can't wait. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Coach Tuberville uh, told us to call him coach. First visit we had with him. Great dude uh, joining us. He gave us the fist bump when you said coach in the introduction. He was. That's right. He, was, he likes it. That. He yeah. likes it. Um, Takes him back to simpler times. <laughs> yes, right. Yes, much simpler times. Chad. Um, when all you had to worry about was, you know, someone, some redneck poisoning a tree at Auburn. That, 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 the simpler times back then. Just killing trees. Life much harder now on, uh, on Capitol Hill.